All right now, I have to repeat the question for those who could not hear. I was able to hear that, but you have to repeat it. Right. Um, have you had any interesting applications for the for the million dollar prize? I'm just going to get a summary of that question that we can share with our audience. Okay. Yes, all of it. They're all interesting. Uh, interest because in most cases they're so vapid. Uh, you know, people will send in claims like, "I'd like to uh, apply for the million dollar prize because I get impressions about people." Period. That's the end of it. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll assign their name to it. And yeah, I get impressions when a guy comes up and punches me in the nose. Uh, I get the impression that he doesn't approve of what I just said, for example. But you get to have the things like this that they're entertaining to a certain extent, but they're also discouraging because you think, I, I think you could be a little more specific. You know, in what way do you get these impressions, and about what? You, and then you, I, I don't write them back. I don't write them back and say, please. Uh, add more uh, body to your to your claim because we can't really define that. But uh, they're they're always fascinating, if not entertaining. They're also always fascinating because you see how how poorly most people think, how shallow they think. They they think because every now and then they get a. a, a an impression that a horse is going to win the race, for example, and they bet on it, and by golly, it does. We mentioned earlier about the guys that don't ever change their mind. People have been in their challenge, too, and you presented one for me uh, when I visited you back in February. Um, you told me about this guy that came up from Mexico and Boston. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that was many years ago when I was just a kid. In fact, I was about 18 or 19, and I was just starting into the Mentalism Act, and I was living in Canada. In a, in a, in a, I had rented a room in this uh, lady's home, and I was living very comfortably there, and I was working in the nightclub, and this one thought uh, I approached him at his table, sat down, and put a couple of stunts of mentalism for him, and I told him quite maybe these are mentalism tricks, and uh, he seemed bemused by it, but next thing I know, he showed up at my at my house the next day, the house where I was staying, and knocked on the door, and the lady came to me and said, and says, we met you last night and he had to speak to you. I got a I went downstairs and he was in the living room and uh, he greeted me and I recognized him. He said, now he said, I've got a fair lot of money. Uh, and he uh, says, I'm, I'm not starving. I, I came from the United States and I heard about you and uh, I have an offer for you. Now, I was getting $75 a week from the nightclub, which is a lot of money in those days, I can tell you. And I did very well on that. And uh, he said, uh, I found out that you get paid seventy-five dollars a week. I'll pay you an additional seventy-five dollars a week if you will simply uh, get me winners in the first race. I said, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute! These are tricks that I do. This is an act." And he said, "No, he said, I, I saw what you did last night. I know tricks, and those are no tricks. I know what a trick consists of." He was actually wrong in his uh, supposition, of course, in his evaluation, and I wasn't going to argue with him. But he said, "I'm telling you." I will give you a racing horn once a week. All I want you to do is open up the racing horn and run your finger down the 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 uh, persons that are going to be in the races. And every now and then, you'll you'll get an inspiration. You'll think that looks important to me, and you'll see it sort of look right to your eyes or whatever uh, impression you get. I want you to make an X beside that and say, "I will bet on the horses." You're not involved from that moment on, but I know, I know for certain that every now and then. There'll be a long shot in there that will make me a lot of money, and I'm willing to split that with you as well. Now, listen how naive people are. And this was a fairly intelligent man. He, he, he spoke in a very educated manner, for an American, that is. And he looked at me straight in the eye and he said, Well, oh, that's a fair offer. I said, Oh, it's a stupid offer. I said, I don't do that sort of thing. And, in fact, yeah, I gave up that particular nightclub after that. It was a little place down on uh, Leroy Street in Toronto. And uh, I quit. I quit and I went on to other things. Oh, that would be how you were for that. Next guy from Mexico. Yes. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, well, I was going too far back in history. <laughs> this gentleman showed up at our door at the James County Education College, which was in Fort Lauderdale at that time, now in Los Angeles. Thank you. And, um, uh, I, I got a call from Linda, the office said, there's a gentleman from Mexico at the front door and he has a huge suitcase. 
and he he looks a little bit tired. And uh, I said, okay, I'll go and meet him. So uh, I had my friend Jose, uh, the man who spoke Spanish, he translated them. The gentleman was very, very uh, efficient in the use of the library. Brought him into the library, and the library was such that we could close all the doors and then shut up all outside light. So we were in the middle of the building, you know, all light back at the doors, you know, the tents that we brought. And uh, that would be the advantage for the tents. And he sat down and he explained and I say that, uh, that he could uh, see in the dark. And he could see in absolute dark because people glowed if they were alive. Alive people, if they were dead, I better need to practice the focus too and that didn't work. I, I'm just supposing, just supposing. Uh, however, he said he could tell where people were in the room. He could talk them up. He said, I do think that's right now. Oh, he was over there. So, I got in the end of the room, and uh, I played some music very loudly, so I talked and talked a little bit early, and I just said, uh, Linda, I'll give you 30 seconds of this music, and you'll move around the room, and you'll take up a position, and then you won't say anything, okay? Try not to breathe loud. And she did that, and uh, you see me, it turned out the lights were it started, and uh, I asked Jose to ask him, where is the understand? And uh, he pointed, he pointed, laying his arm out on the big table, so that very similar to the set up in here, and he the big conference table, he pointed a certain there. And I said, well, let's turn on the lights. We turn on the lights, and of course he was off by a couple of art animals, I was saying. He actually was on the dinner chair, I think, on the pool of Oh, she is. Yeah, that was wrong. And uh, they say, oh, do it again. He did it six times. He couldn't find me. He didn't know what he did. And uh, he, he just sat there. He shook his head. And he was going there too. He said, well, where did go? Now, this is somebody who really has a test of himself. So of course, he hadn't made out a, an application uh, before that language is the first uh, thing to be called for in that client to go to the price. But the poor fellow just took his suitcase, which was an empty suitcase for the million dollars. He didn't have any other baggage with He had this big empty suitcase so he could fill it with the million dollars. This is how naive he was. And he didn't even realize there was a preliminary test for our dog. So we gave him a preliminary test right there, and it simply did not work. He tried six times and failed each time. And he wasn't off by a few degrees. He was way off. In every case, because he had 360 degrees at each of the point. And uh, so he just left and shake his head and walking out down the street and make his own again. That's so sad. What's really sad about that is that he doesn't, he left not accepting yeah. that he couldn't actually see anybody in the door. No, he, he didn't know what was wrong with it, but there was something wrong with the text. That's what he told me. Oh, where, where did I see that speaker that was talking about it? No, it was at the Global Ages Convention. I think it was a dead end. It was talking about this condition that people go blind and they don't admit yes. that they are blind. Yes, yes. All right, well, here's somebody who... And won't accept that reality. It's funny. All right, uh, I'm going to repeat the question for the benefit okay. of the audience who did not hear DPR. Uh, the first question was whether Randy could pull something interesting from behind my ear. Uh, and the, uh, the second question was for, for either of us to say, uh, if we could bring one person back from the dead to talk to, who would that one person be? And I'm going to have the second question addressed to you first. Okay. I uh, have often been given this question, and uh, I'd love to talk to Harry and Dean. He died in 1926. I happen to know that because I know the history of the man rather well. Uh, and I just like to, I like to ask him for his motivation. Because uh, at one time he did a mentalism act with his wife, Bess. It was called A Pooling with the Spirits. He did it on a lot of their shows. In fact, I never was able to get it. We don't have enough information about the act to know whether it was a cold reading act or, or a question and answer thing. I did not but what it was. But that's, that's what fascinated me. What was his motivation? Since he did an act himself with the wife at that point, uh, what 
what was his motivation for turning away from it? I think it might have been the death of his mother. I think that really set him off because uh, he got questions right away from Midian that, that who would call up his mother. First, the big surprise that all the Midians was, so he told me his mother never spoke a word of English. She only spoke Yiddish, and she came back from the spirit world speaking English. But of course, uh, the problem with that was that they all had the same answer. Oh, in heaven, everybody speaks English. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be heaven. Very, that would be <laughs> well, you know, if, if all the air traffic controllers had this was then I'm sure that I, I would think that the traffickers in heaven would have to make them up with some yeah, yeah. I don't know whether you knew that you had this, but oh yes, I, oh I didn't know that I could you know start our audience what this is. And it happened to be behind your ear there. Oh yeah, you I think you've got my medication. Is <laughs> <laughs> it what it says Uh this is oh, oh, yes. what is it is it if we repeat the question, uh, DPR asks uh, from one of the audience has James Randi ever been threatened with legal action by somebody who thought they deserved the million dollars, thought they adequately demonstrated their paranormal ability, and that James is apparently just in denial of the fact that they, I mean, how many times have you heard this? Yeah, you're just, you, again, it's because you hate God, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, you just live in denial. Well, please flesh that out. Oh, yes, well, uh, I've been threatened with legal actions uh, all kinds, and some have actually been launched. But uh, first of all, I have an insurance policy that protects me against this sort of thing. Uh, to a certain extent, I don't know whether to do it all the way, but I don't want to test it. Uh, the point <laughs> is that uh, these, these folks, uh, first of all, they usually refuse to make out the application. There's a, a Greek fellow named Betulkas, uh, a professor at something or other in Greece, and uh, he uh, wants the guys to hold up. He, he, he can prove that it works. You see. And they ask him, okay, they go, the application. He says, no, 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 I'm a person of very great repute. Everyone knows and Greece knows me, so I don't have to make out the application. This is a pretty good way of getting out of it. See, because we require, they will say, first, make the application stating what your claim is in two paragraphs, but no more. And then we can round it out afterwards if we have to. But he refuses to do this. He thinks this uh, that this means it obligates us to accept his challenge. I accept his challenge, but take out the application and we'll move from there. And he won't do that. And that protects him. But he doesn't have to actually have to do the this. But we get all kinds of people going to sue us. Oh, yes. Every day, I suppose, somewhere along the line, someone is going to sue us for not accepting their application. But they refuse to go along with the news. On, on that line, I have to remind you that when I was here before, uh, two years ago, I wasn't able to make last year's very exciting. The last thing you have to say, I didn't make it up to you. Because I've heard very great things about last year's thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was here, uh, the year before, there was uh, there was somebody here from, uh, I think he was originally Indian, and living in England, he had made a challenge against um, all right, um, we're going to have to close uh, at this point because uh, Randy is running a, a major event here in uh, the choir presentation. I want to let him out the door as quickly as possible. Uh, James, you were good and uh, maybe the final words if you want to get home. Thank you sincerely for taking the final Oh, it's my, my pleasure. Of course, and this is what I open my talk to. I use every time, and it's always a, a delight. And I want to thank you, Gary, on the other end of this session uh, for uh, handling the questions very well and very in a very polite and uh, satisfactory manner, I would say. And uh, we didn't come to fix the cuts because we're connected only electronically. Otherwise, it might have been a different story, but I hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I said. Uh, Where have you been? I think that would do very well. Okay, so as, as a kid, I did appeal to them on a cake. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if God were to appear before Randy, Randy would uh, ask God where he went. Uh, if God appeared before me, I, my first question would be for him to explain various details of the Mahabharata and the Bhagavad Gita that I do not understand. Of course, I would assume that if God is going to appear, it would be the God of the 
oldest convention gods. I don't know the newer ones. Yeah. Uh, however, if it was one of the newly conceived gods, perhaps the uh, the not, not the Abrahamic god of Abraham and then Moses and all of this, then my question for that god would be, oh, you TF, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Thank you. All Thank right, you. close it down the show. We're gone. Randy, that was wonderful. Oh.